Good afternoon and happy 2024. My name is Kirsty Dignam and I'm here today to look at the weekly energies for today's Monday's musings with some crazy ass hair <laughs> going on. <laughs> and there really feels like there's something in that today, no matter how much I'm trying to control my hair, no matter how much I'm trying to smooth it down or even give it some curl, it's literally taking a middle ground. It's <laughs> it's flat in some places and it's alive in another. And as I feel into the energies of today with the new year, that's exactly what I'm sensing. There's a real balance between new ideas, new ways of seeing things and bringing forward old foundations alongside that to keep that equilibrium, to keep that harmony <laughs> right now is going to be key. To do all we can to keep the peace feels quite poignant. Oh, pulling up my trousers, getting ready, pulling up my sleeves. Feels quite poignant this week to keep the peace with ourselves. I'm fully aware that around about this time of year, as we start a new year, according to certain cat, um, I was gonna say catalogs. <laughs> Okay, looking at what we're buying into and the cost of it long term. But according to certain calendars, as we go into this new year, I'm acutely aware that we all think about what we want 2024 to bring. And that helps us to reflect on where we're at. And obviously things like Mercury are starting to go retrograde this, no, starting to go forward this week. But under it, there can almost feel like a sensation of having to go back in order to move forward. I shared the daily guidance today and one of the quotes was about repetition leading to self-mastery. For January in particular, and I may go into month to month readings either today or another time because there could be um, potential insight there this week as to how the whole year will be. Okay, But at the beginning of this month and particularly at the beginning of this year, there is going to be moments where we almost feel as if we're going backwards to look at what works and what skills we have gained in order to take them forward. For me this morning, one of them was compassion. One of them was doing my best. One of the great four agreements, which I'll put a link to in, um, in the comments, but doing my best. So I didn't get up as early as I would have liked but I did get up early, which is something, New Year's Day, <laughs> considering how late I went to bed, obviously. Um, I didn't start the day with a huge ceremony as I'd planned, but I did find myself sitting in sacred space. I didn't cut out all caffeine, but I didn't start it until after I'd had my juices. So today I really felt into compassion, patience and balance. And what that did for me personally was allow me to keep going with some of the intentions that I have rather than causing an inner tension. And that's being asked to be looked at this week. The difference between our intentions, what we're trying to achieve and the impact that they can actually have on us in regards to the tension we can put on ourselves if it doesn't go the way we think it should. So the other thing that was coming up this morning when it came to lighting my fire in the front room, other than the, the crazy out of control connection, which again feels very important for the whole of this year, actually allowing our connection, um, obviously in a lot of tribes, hair is symbolic for our connection to source, but allowing our connection to be as wild and as crazy as it needs to be is gonna really show different sides to ourselves. Um, but there's more to come with that as the year goes on. Today, when I was lighting the fire in our lounge, I didn't empty it. I felt really pivotal to use some of the embers from the past to keep the fire going. But it did take the odd need for um, a creative spark, shall we say, a little bit of help in different places to keep the initial flame sparking and burning. Now the reason I share this, and that feels very important this week, why are we sharing what we share? What are we hoping to gain out of that? What are we hoping to impact as a result? The reason I share this is, I really felt into a conversation I was having with my husband today in regards to how important it is to keep the spark alive, 
not only in relationships, but in what it is we're trying to create, what it is we're trying to bring forth, what it is we want to um, connect to, whether that is spirituality, which heads up, it can take some work, you know, and dedication and commitment and application, whether that's, yeah, our loved ones, our family, our job, our motivation even. It all takes sacred energy to tend to that flame. And the flame, what does the flame do? What does fire do? It transmutes, it brings forth change. So depending this week on how well the home fires, quite literally, are burning, is going to have an impact on how well we are able to tend to our own needs, our own changes, our own New Year's Eve resolutions, if, if that's your thing. The final thing I want to bring attention to today you know, trying to control my hair and being unable to, I'm unable to fit into this, this mold, this idea I have of how I should be when I'm looking at the energies for this week, you know, how a, a tarot reader should be, how a channeler should be, how a healer should be, how, what spirituality should look like. And thankfully my hair is saying, fuck off, <laughs> just be who you are. It's going to be an underlying message for 2024 is to bring forth who you are in the arena in which you find yourself and that may not be comfortable to you that may not fit in with your own beliefs and values and judgments and those of others but 2024 is incredibly about asking and being more that's not to say that we're not enough but to actually go back to the original spark of who we are in order to find that drive and that passion and that creativity. So I'm acutely aware that my hair looks like it did when, when I was, you know, in the in the 80s and in the 90s. And when I think back to that energy, yeah, I was a lot more fun. I was a lot more alive. I was a lot more wild. Um, and that is going to come forward for us all this year. We do have the year of the dragon. We do have the year of strength in the tarot and the star card as well, which is our vision. So looking at how we see our inner world, looking at how well we connect to our bodies and our emotions and that divine feminine within us and how sacred we actually view that and ourselves as a result. And how we view sacredness, full stop, spirituality, full stop, connection to source, whatever that may be for you, creativity, God, tarot cards, whatever, how we view it all is really going to be, I want to say under the microscope, so it's about looking at the fine details, because underneath it all I can feel my root chakra really going ten to the dozen and getting quite excitable, underneath it all is our connection to the earth. Underneath it all is our connection to the physical. When we talk about the feminine, and I don't mean gender, we, you know, we speak of emotions and we speak of intuition and moon stages and also the earth, also our body. The feminine is the physical. Um, this year in particular, divinity is going to take a whole other perspective in that it isn't about transcending the body, but bringing the soul down into it and delivering our soul's potential as a result. So on that note, yes, we are going to be reflecting. Yes, there are going to be things that return for us to look at, to see whether or not we really want to change them. An example, <laughs> obviously, well, I say obviously, on my New Year's resolution is the Oh, the one I carry on with every year, must lose weight. <laughs> uh, one, I feel like I should do that. It's like the done thing, New Year's Eve. Um, two, it's very much about me eating more healthy and blah, blah, blah. But this morning I just fell into it and I just find it so boring. <laughs> I just find it so boring. And I actually caught a glimpse of my changing body as I go into different stages of my own womanhood. And... I don't want to lose it. I don't want to get rid of it. I want to enhance. So this week in particular, before we go rushing into what we want to change, what we want to fix, what we want to get rid of, it could be really valuable if we pause and look at something for what it actually is to really see it beyond our own judgments and expectations of what we should do about it having a good hard look at what is going on and then 
deciding whether or not we want to get rid of it or use it to enhance where we are. Truth be known, I could have really brushed my hair out today, made it look more sophisticated and fit the mold or whatever. I like the uncertainty of it being a bit wild and a bit crazy and I want to enhance that. Um, so really acknowledging that, I feel that in my sacral, <laughs> I really feel that in my sacral chakra. It's the spark. This week, finding the spark, what initiates you? What helps you to be in the light that you are? On the discussion with my husband today, we were talking about relationships. And actually, I'd used an example um, of an old couple uh, when, you know, particularly the man comes along and has a little, you know, feel of his, of his wife or partner's bottom or whatever. And how often I see people shrugging that off, but how that can actually come out as a form of flirting in that relationship and how important that can actually be, that spark, that attraction, whether it's a relationship, whether it's something we're trying to achieve, I've got something in, in my face, whether it's something we're trying to achieve or bring forth or manifest, how important that attractiveness is um, within the situation making space for that so that we don't seek that flirtation and fun and joy with other areas that may not be what we're actually looking for, that may not sustain the passion, love, change, drive that we're actually looking for. Really feeling into the energy of temptation this week and why it's coming to the surface what it's bringing forth for you to see. Whether it's going to help you change, enhance where you are, or in some cases prevent you from moving on. Okay, so with that in mind, I hear the song, we didn't start the fire. <laughs> right, let's look at the energies for this week and how to best navigate them. It feels important to be clear what it is you're looking for, looking into, trying to achieve and why. So I know for argument's sake, or an example, um, for me to believe that I want to lose weight is more about me feeling comfortable in my body. Um, so addressing that is going to bring forth or at least be a good foundation behind the change for me. Okay, Ace of Swords at the bottom of the pack. So really unravelling where these intentions, where these ideas, where these insights are coming from. Walking the labyrinth of the mind is going to be key this week as well. You know, if we want different results, not stopping at the same answer. Keep going, keep going, keep walking, keep unravelling, keep undoing narratives and stories um, behind the intention. Because then you can find the energy that's really going to help you move forward with it. Okay, the medicine that's going to help you move forward with it. Energies this week and how to best navigate. <laughs> I just, I felt the most beautiful, clear, crisp support and just move on, just get on with it. And yeah, we have the star card. So one of the things I noticed today when I was coming upstairs, I kept thinking, oh, I've, got, I've got to go back downstairs. So it's the, um, the staircase of the mind, right? Back downstairs to get a lighter to light the candles, back downstairs to get the incense, back downstairs to get X, Y, and Z. And actually everything was upstairs. Everything was everything I needed was where I was headed and that feels really poignant this week that everything we need is on the journey towards where we are going okay so sometimes we wait for things to be perfect the perfect relationship you know the perfect situation the perfect house the perfect job it could just be a step towards that so really being open to a far bigger vision this week is going to be a reflective insight, not only to where you are, but where you're going. Okay, energies this week and how to best navigate them. <laughs> I'm really feeling into, it. I did feel into like a movement, a flow, a saying what you feel, going with everything. You know, the not trying to control it, just being free in who we are. It feels like the whole emphasis this year but this week in particular, we may be shown where we're not and where some of that can be down to us. 
you know, and what control we're trying to put onto something. So yeah, we have the four of wands at the bottom, just dancing it out, just moving with the flow, finding our own rhythm, find out our, finding our own feet, recognizing where we are before we try and change it. Okay, so I am this time, energies this week, <laughs> being determined. Being determined, Monday, Tuesday, I can quite easily get caught up almost in a vortex of going over the same message uh, this week in particular and on the Monday. And we do have the magician here. So being determined, what is above will be below. What we continue to feed energy into will continue to occur. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Sunday overall now I'm smiling because some of the cards that have come out are cards that were um, in my own yearly reading <laughs> yesterday so it's interesting to see because some of the insights were to keep an eye on this week actually for an emphasis for the whole year so again that's being reflected back here and keeping an eye out for any messages that continue to rise up for your awareness this week they are important they're not coming up just out of sheer coincidence and recognizing what coincidence actually means to us um, is going to be illuminating this week because it's all going to give insight into the steps forward for the whole year we forget that Right at the beginning of the year, we get so caught up with resolutions of what we want to change. We often try and navigate and dictate the energies rather than stepping back, feeling into what's occurring and allowing that to give us the information and the guidance that we need in order to create that change. So at the bottom of the pack, the card is actually not turned over. So let's do that. Yeah. Underneath it all, we have judgment and the five of pentacles. We need to see what's going on. And that can be a little bit of a um, harsh, stark, low energy, in particular in January. I know we have the, the blue day, the day where most people feel low when they return to work and it's the longest month. It's normally financially for most people the hardest month. It can be a real drag out this week, this, this week, this week, this month, whatever. It can be a real drag if we continue to hold on to the judgments behind it because we have judgment there so it's really important to let this go to let go of page of wands any intentions that we may have not the intentions themselves but the assumptions the expectations on ourselves on each other and to start again with the fall underneath just to start again okay what is underneath it all what am i actually trying to achieve what does that feel like what does that look like what does that bring forth within me my hair the conversation with my husband this morning the wild energy the all of it it's me it's me it's another side of me and it's coming up to be seen reflecting on that this week could be quite pivotal that yeah things are coming up to be seen to show us parts of ourselves we haven't perhaps connected to in quite a long time and then it's a part of us that is needed if we are to fulfill the intentions that we may have on a subconscious or soul level for 2024 and that's again where we have the ace of swords at the bottom of it all some of the intentions that we have we may not even be aware of yeah we may not even be aware of so taking stock of that reflecting on that allowing the mind to dream to imagine again i was speaking with my husband yesterday and sometimes we can say i i want health i want money for 2024 i want love for 20 you know and it very it's great to have that initial spark with that it's great to have that initial insight but what does that look like what does that feel what would you do with it explore imagine otherwise we're only ever going to get to the first step of the intention you know that that everlasting monday i'll start again monday or well i'll start after i've done this and i'll start after i've done that what are we trying to achieve? How would that affect our life? Let's really unravel the picture that is being gifted to us, the potential of it. Yes, it could take all year, but we're going to have little 
views of it this week if we can be open if we can open our mind our imagination after all imagination is the image of the nation right how we see ourselves is going to be fundamental this year and we are going to see different sides to who we thought we are so just being open to that so let's break it down on the monday we have the magician and that is that vortex like energy that is that infinite energy that's going to be present in the whole of 2024 but that we could actually get caught up in especially emotionally if we're trying to figure things out so allowing things to flow through us remember the magician as above so below being the hollow bone feeling into what is occurring trusting our body to react in a way that is needed if we allow space for that, if we bring back some of the more ceremonial magic of life, which is experience, application, feeling into what is occurring, doing something with it. We can't do that if we don't allow ourselves to channel it first. On the Tuesday, we have the Queen of Pentacles and there's a invitation here to ground into what we already hold in our hands, to ground into what it doesn't feel as if it's fallen in our lap it feels as if it's been hard earned however again that's a perception again that is a journey that we perhaps have needed to go on in order to recognize our worth it's always been there who we are has always been there um, a lot of the new year's resolutions a lot of the changes that we're trying to bring in are to bring forward a part of us that has always been there so rather than holding on to what we need to create perhaps it's a time now to let go of what has stood in the way sometimes changing that perspective can really help particularly with intentions so rather than saying i'm trying to create money or a home or blah blah, blah i'm letting go of insecurity perspective tuesday look at the energy that you are grounding into look at what you are holding on to in regards to your own connection to your physical body your ability to create what it is you're trying to achieve your connection to the earth your view on it all in particular on the tuesday how nurturing are you being we have the queen here the queen yeah is our nurturing actions how nurturing are we being to creativity itself i love law of attraction the secret book vision boards um dispatcho fire ceremony i love magic absolutely love magic over the years i've really seen a almost masculine approach to magic you know if you think positive it will happen if you do these things it will occur if it hasn't it's a reflection of where you're at and did it. and it feels quite old school antagonistic irritable not good enough type energy in regards to magic so on the tuesday softening it up a little bit having a bit of fun with these int these intentions what would it feel like to find these things occurring in your life what would your life look at look like what do you need to look at in yourself in order to do that an example if I wanted to get strong, fit and healthy, I would really need to look at all the views within my own mindset that tell me that I'm not, that I'm weak or incapable. And there, there are views there that say that. So I would need to look at that and nurture that and perhaps give them a different role before even trying to achieve something that I have a secondary gain behind not achieving it. So on the Tuesday, really feeling into that and nurturing and having compassion with ourselves, balancing what we are doing rather than focusing on what we're not. On the Wednesday, we have the Empress. Provided we can do that, provided we can connect to the earth, we realise we're not doing this alone, <laughs> that we're actually supported. Some of the guidance I had for my own yearly reading um, was a, a channeled message actually from Pachamama to myself and there was a lot there about I will match the energy that you put in. Now that does, I really feel that in my chest. <laughs> <laughs> now that doesn't mean that the more I do, the more I'm going to get. It's a deeper energy than that. It's a more 
sacred understanding of creativity, sacred understanding of life, you know, living experiences as well, sacred understanding of lessons and teaching and medicine and our connection here, our cycles, you know, this card has the moon in the background as well, our cycles, it's more about a sacred understanding of our own feminine divinity here and with the message of i will match your energy it was literally if you're going to be aggressive so am i if you're going to be nurturing so am i if you're going to do these things with ease and grace so will i really looking at that seeing that energy as your future self as what it is you are trying to bring forward what do they look like are they strong are they more compassionate are they feeling into being more abundant what is the difference between you and that version of yourself conceiving that now bringing that in to all that you do all that you're of service to your conversations with yourself the um, view that you have of your own ability to create your connection here really feeling into that taking time yeah ripe with potential but not delivering yet taking time understanding that to take time is actually an action a very valid action and it allows things to change so if we had a uterus that was contracting all the time you wouldn't get that moment or a muscle as we're exercising you won't get that moment in between where it can stretch where it can change where it can shift instead you're going to get trauma so taking time out is going to be key particularly halfway through the week on the thursday we have the two of wands here so we've gone from the queen of pentacles holding a connection to the earth we've gone from the earth herself to on the thursday okay seeing it for what it is seeing it for what it is we want to create taking a moment out to pause and reflect to look at what's going on around us but not let that direct our attention our focus or our own journey here in doing so things are falling into place so you can see this character is preparing to travel <laughs> she knows where she wants to go she knows how she wants to get there and she's just preparing at the moment okay and that's where we all are collectively we're january <laughs> goodness sake we're the first day of january a huge emphasis here of getting everything completed on the first day and if it doesn't go to plan on the first of january then we might as well chuck everything out and just not bother whoa okay on the friday we start to really mature in our own mindset we start to really look at our actions and ensure that they are in alignment in a more forward focused driven perspective here we get to see the wisdom that is needed to take us forward the energy that is needed to take us forward you know we get to feel into the truth of who we are the truth of what we're capable of how aligned we actually are with our intentions in regards to that you know it's like me saying okay with well by the end of this year i want to be an olympic athlete it's not to say that the potential is not there but my god where i am right now yeah there's a lot to be done a lot of drive and a lot of actions that are needed being realistic on the friday is key here because on the saturday and sunday we see just how many intentions have come from childhood and how scattered that can leave us just how much of that has come from unconditional love and how much of it is coming from a very young mind one of my intentions for this year was to choose divine love <laughs> to choose i really got tired of the word unconditional um i've heard many people say that the only people capable or the only energies capable of unconditional love are children and animals yes to an extent but we're all capable of divine love and divine love is all encompassing even the times when we can't figure things out even the times when we don't quite understand what is going on divine love has a trust to it and at the weekend we are being asked to really look into where our trust may be lacking in our own ability to create what it is we want 
where particularly in our childhood we may have wanted things and it hasn't quite happened or we want things because of our childhood. By the end of this month it's going to be very clear what we actually do want and how to start to achieve that with really solid steps. It's not to say what will happen by the end of this month but the awareness is going to be there. But until then we are going to be showing where we may be a bit scattered mentally where emotionally we may need to bring in more harmony and you know the six of cups we're talking around the energy of, of Tippereth around the energy of our solar plexus of our soul of harmony and beauty so yes there will be times when we will go backwards to reflect nostalgic moments where we can go back and really feel into the magic <laughs> that many have forgotten the connection to earth that many have forgotten the joy that comes from enjoying the experience rather than trying to rush forward that many have forgotten myself included oh my god myself included um and from there we will see where we have tried to control our own connection where to ourselves to each other to what we do to what we offer to source to spirituality to it all now scattered that can leave us yeah, and then we can start to really, really bring home our inner child and their dreams and their wishes. And when I say inner child, what I'm really feeling here is the inner wild and our subconscious intentions. Subconsciously, there are intentions that are occurring that are helping and hindering any manifestations we may have in place for 2023. And throughout the whole year, we will be made aware of them. It's time to, you know, when we think of the strength card, you know, some people almost see the feminine as silencing the animal and other people see it as encouraging the animal to speak. There's a time and a place for the inner child to say what they need. And, you know, balance is key. We need the magic of youth and we need imagination and a little bit of naivety and a little bit of wildness. And we need to know when that can be beneficial and when that can actually be more negative and what I'm looking at here is the full archetype the fool like all cards go through many stages the fool that doesn't know he's a fool the fool that knows he's a fool and therefore knows nothing and the fool that knows he's a fool that knows everything that nothing can actually truly be new all the time that he knows everything and then having the choice exactly what it is he wants to carry forward and it's that that we're being faced with there is no ignorance in 2024 in regards to where we may be, have hidden ourselves i was gonna say hidden ourselves back but nowhere we may have hidden ourselves where we may have not trusted in our own strength our own light in particular we are going to be made aware of that and then we are also going to feel into the wisdom that comes from recognizing we are our light and that whatever is for us is going to reach us anyway and then we are going to be gifted choices with what we do with that information so what are we going to do with this information because it does feel a little bit higgledy piggledy this week to be expected well we are going to look at the major arcanas that are guiding us. Always, always, always looking at the energies from the earth and from the collective surrounding us, supporting us. And in that we have the magician, the empress and the fool. So we have three. So this week is actually a week of great creativity. I feel quite cold. <laughs> of great creativity, of magic, of new beginnings of wonderful potential and we are being shown that we are being gifted that it may not come across that way but we are being gifted the chance to realize how well we are channeling that magic how well we are creating and whether or not we are doing that from a new be new beginning a new perspective a new belief or not on a minor level what we do with that on a human level we have one, two, three. We have three sword cards. 
The Three of Swords in the Tarot, yes, we are looking at heartbreak. We're also looking at expanding the heart, knowing that things that may come up this week are to do just that. They are to open our heart to ourselves first and foremost, and then to each other, and then to our intentions, to help them be less scattered. We have the Page of Swords and the Ace of Swords, so there is that new beginning on a mindset there is that new beginning in regards to what we do with the unknown the um, wishes that we may have for 2024 there is a new start here mentally available because it's new it's about treating it new with the ace of swords and the page of swords here our actions are in the early stages not destroying them mentally before they've even had chance to take root, to break out of the shell of judgments that we may have put them in, to find themselves embedded into the earth and given the opportunity to grow, to really watch that, to really ensure that our actions are mature enough to hold space for these new beginnings. Because the third card we have is the King of Swords. It is our masculine. It is what we do with the insights that we receive. It is how well we can hold space for scattered ideas <laughs> and imagination. I uh, hear the song, uh, Willy Wonka, um, come with me and you'll see a world of pure imagination. That is the potential this week, really opening up and allowing ourselves to not know, allowing ourselves to be scattered. This reading has been quite scattered. It doesn't mean it's not relevant doesn't mean it's not applicable to where we are trusting that acknowledging that we're at the beginning stages of what we think we want and that's key what we think we want for january throughout the whole year is going to change but january just being really open to allowing these different views to come in there is an emphasis a undercurrent within them all a king of swords inside them all that is going to come to light as we go through the month and probably have little hints in the ideas that we have an example being in my utmost health um, providing and being of service to the best that I can all these intentions have being who I am and being more of who I am <laughs> at the very centre of them. Even the wild hair and the trying to control things and being unable and being okay with that, they all have at the centre of it being more of who I am, less of who I'm not. Every intention that is in alignment with that, keep going with it. The rest, yeah, they may scatter us, take us on a different um agenda a different path a different approach ultimately underneath it all what's the one thing what's the one thing that you are trying to achieve for 2024 little heads up it's going to be to do with your light it's going to be to do with why you're here it's going to be to do with your own sovereignty and the vision that you have for yourself and the vision that is had for you on a, on a far greater scale than even we may have seen. So, and yes, there will be feelings of grief that will rise from that, particularly when we see where we may have not quite been in our fullest potential or not quite lived how we would like to. It's not to punish us. It's not to upset us. It's to show us that there's still time that there's that it's all part of the process and it's never too late to start again never too late to start again to find that spark to ensure that the spark that you're finding is going to help you sustain your light but it's never too late to start again it's like learning lifelong learning that learning is about ourselves. it's lifelong okay so then we have one pentacle card, two wand cards, although it is to one side, two wand cards and one cup card. So we're going to go for the wand cards. We have the page of wands and the two of wands. And there's a bit of conflict here of, ah, oh, it's new year, right? I should be bringing in new things. I should be manifesting things. Or alternatively, I've asked for all these things. Where are they? It's new year. It's January the 1st. Give it time. Keep that balance. A bit like this morning. Yeah, I had my juice. I had caffeine as well. 
<laughs> yeah, I got up early. I did turn off my alarm. <laughs> Having that balance, knowing that something is better than nothing, every small step is going to count. You know, knowing that slow progress takes time, you know, real sustain, substantial change takes time. Um, not giving it all up, not handing it all over, not having no say in it, but just flowing as well. Flowing with our intentions also, with the growth that occurs as a result. I was always shown when it comes to creation, the binary code, the one naught, one naught, one naught. And it was a like a, a beat of a drum. It was a tap on, tap off, tap on, tap off, tap on, tap off. Do this, wait for the change. Do this, wait for the change. It's a conversation between you and what it is you're trying to achieve. Allow things to change. Let go of the judgment underneath of how that should be. Allow things to shift and then create, shift, and then create contractions of creativity. It's like a living energy, a living being here that you're actually developing with. Then you have one pentacle card and it's the queen of pentacles. So it is very much about nurturing our physicality. I want to pause, I want to go back round to the emotions. When our mind is connected, when we are in alignment with our spiritual drive, our ambition, our passion, you know, if you're going to act and the passion is not there, that's the result you're going to get. So wait until the passion is, wait until that spark is there, okay? If you're going to have this huge energy and do nothing with it, that's going to have a negative, oh, well, I didn't do that effect. Really feeling into the flow of that passion. How? By connecting to your emotions. Always coming back to the emotions, recognizing the emotions for the air, earth, fire, water that they are, really feeling into our connection to our own inner landscape is really going to be pivotal this week. With fun, with harmony, with beauty, with a little bit more childhood curiosity. <laughs> yeah, today, hmm, where's the curly hair going then? Oh, okay. <laughs> Okay, there's a rebellious side there that wants to come through. There's more fun there. How long will it last? Who knows? Right now, it's it's what I need because the inner child in me is saying it's New Year's Day. I, I don't want to work. Why should I work? And I said, like, okay, so how about we make this a bit more fun? How about you do what you want to do in a way that you want to do it that is beneficial for us all? compromise with the emotions ensure that the inner child is on board and not sulking somewhere in the corner <laughs> and nurturing that energy rather than trying to control it getting it to do a certain way really nurturing that energy in our physicality in our actions in our approach to it all is going to be key not only this week but the whole bloody year nurture what is going on Doing something the way it's always been done just because it's always been done that way, including previous successful manifestations, doesn't mean it's going to work again. Being open to different ways of creating this year is, yeah, exciting, scary, frustrating, needed. <laughs> okay, so on that note... And I'm bringing all the cards together. And that is where I look back at the magician and the empress and the fool. We are being asked to create something different in the way that we create it. Okay. And that is going to be unique for everybody. <laughs> That's going to be unique for everybody. So mine would be ceremony normally. And I may be asked to do something completely different. Yours may be um, vision boards or, you know, a very logical approach. And don't be surprised if you're asked to embody more spirituality. Yeah. So that we can get both sides of creativity here. It's going to be different for everybody. Okay. So that's a bigger picture. Being aware of that this week the bigger picture that is trying to come through but always bring it back to this present moment that is one of the fundamental aspects of manifestation seeing where we want to be 
always coming back to where we are, whether it's a <laughs> seven of cups and nine of swords at the bottom of the pack, whether it's a tarot reading, whether it's a vision board, whether it's a strategic meeting for business, where do you want this to go? What do you actually want? What potential is there? But always coming back to now, the present moment and having that divine patience. You know, the strength card is also about divine patience and an open heart and trust. Having that divine patience to recognize the steps that are going to take you there in each moment. Otherwise, we can get a little bit seven of cups. Oh, I don't know what I want. Oh, I don't know whether I'm going to do this, 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 this and this. And underneath it, there is the potential of the nine of swords, this mental energy, this worry, concern, insomnia. How am I going to figure things out? It's all the same. Actually, it isn't. So when it feels the same, really feeling into what it is you want to change, go there, go there, feel it sense into it and then bring it back to now with the truth and the awareness that yes there may be things that need changing is that not intention is that not what it was all about we do have the star card this year as well one of the things with the star card it's a great card it's beautiful it's the other side of the strength card the key is there it's the other side of the strength right the star card is beautiful it happens after the tower but with the star card it's about that vision can feel so far away it can feel as if we're never going to get there because we're down here looking up at the stars, recognizing each step, each part of strength and courage that we open ourselves up to that potential is going to give, like me with everything being upstairs, it's going to give us what we need. King of Swords. Yeah, elevate that mindset higher in January. Really, really don't become a servant of the mind really take control of that you want change then it starts there you know the the air the unknown is one of the first things on the medicine wheel you want change yeah how can you think about things differently this week okay one card overall for how to best navigate so my root chakra is going i feel a bit wobbly looking into that where you may feel wobbly and acknowledging that <laughs> So I have to laugh because I really feel into the relevance of this. So yeah, there we have those stairs, right? But we also have the Hierophant, the Keeper of the Sacred, where we feel wobbly, being the Keeper of the Sacred, yeah? Being our own teacher without being too dogmatic. This is the Hierophant, having some fun, having some joy with that, inviting in that devil-like energy that tempts us to have a good hard look at our own divinity and who we are and our own belief system and our own structures and our own lessons and our own teachings and our own wisdom here because underneath it all is the joy of finding out our own light you know the devil is the light bringer and that's what he does he brings forward the truth of where we may be holding ourselves back where we may be addicted to playing small addicted to substances addicted to bad relationships addicted to all these things that continue to fuel this story that will dogmatically hold us in place really looking at that this week that's going to be the essence behind it all where we feel wobbly in our own ascension we feel wobbly in our own light we feel wobbly in being and showing up as we are as the year gets on that's going to be harder because it is time to let go it is time to move forward now from any emotions that are continuing to keep us in a state of grief for the life that we believe we can't have can't get don't deserve aren't entitled to the story behind it all it's time to move forward from that now take care have the most incredible week and i shall see you next week